The last property that I really want to talk to you about regarding logarithms is something called the change of base formula. And this will enable us to find the log base B of any number on a calculator. So to evaluate something like log base 4 of 20 means to find what is the exponent of 4 that must give us 20, right? 4 to what number is 20? Well, we know that 4 squared is 16 and 4 cubed is 64, so the log base 4 of 20 has to be somewhere between the 2 and the 3, right? To find it explicitly, we're going to let y equal log base 4 of 20. And then remember our conversion to the exponential form. That means 4 to the y is equal to 20. So after we have this exponential equation, note that we need to figure out what y is equal to. And so we will apply a property of logarithms to bring that exponent down. And that is if we take the log of, do you remember this, log base b of x to the r is r times the log base b of x. So we can take the log that is a common log of each side because we know how to use the calculator for common log. We take the common log of each side, the power property says this is equivalent to y times log 4 equals log of 20. And then to solve for y, we can divide each side by the log of 4. And therefore we get y is equal to log of 20 divided by log of 4. And if we use our calculator to approximate that value, we will see that it is about 2.16. And we knew it had to be between 2 and 3, closer to the 2, since 20 is closer to 16 than it is to 64. So this leads us to state a change of base formula. And it is for a, b, and x positive real numbers with a not equal to 1 and b not equal to 1. Then the log base b of x can be written as a log base a of x divided by the log base a of b. That is, we can convert a log to another base by applying this formula. And notice that the argument of the log goes in the numerator, but the log of the base, think of base or basement, right? The log of the base has to go down in the denominator in this quotient. Now, it is really not practical for us to think about just any generic value of a for the base. We know that the most common bases are going to be the base 10 and base e. And so we can rewrite log base b of x to be the common log, that is a log of x, divided by the log of b. Or we can also write this as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of b. So that is the preferred basis that we want to use with this formula. So again, the log of the argument divided by the log of the base with either common log or natural log. So let's see how we can apply this to rewrite an expression and to evaluate it. So if I have the log base 7 of 100 by the change of base formula, this is equal to, in terms of common logs, it would be the log of the argument 100 divided by the log of the base 7. Or with natural logs, it would be the natural log of 100 divided by the natural log of 7. And so I can input this on my calculator and just remember what log base 7 of 100 means. So what is the exponent of 7 that gives me 100? So I know 7 squared is 49, 7 cubed, it's 243, so it's got to be somewhere between the 2 and 3. And when I use my calculator, I find that it's approximately 2.37. Now, we'll also see this in terms of algebraic expressions. That is, when the argument is an algebraic expression, log base 4 of x plus 1. Right? What if you wanted to graph that function? Well, your calculator will only graph the common log and the natural log, so we need to have a way to convert this to the common log or natural log. 
And in a similar fashion, we can rewrite this as the log of the argument, x plus 1, divided by the log of the base, which is 4, or natural log of x plus 1, divided by natural log of 4. And so if you input this on the calculator, I'm just going to say we wanted to graph this function, y is equal to log base 4 of x plus 1, I would have to enter y is equal to log of x plus 1 divided by log 4, or use the, uh, the natural log. And then I can graph now to see that this is a transformation of the basic log function shifted one unit to the left. Now remember that on this graph, your calculator does not show the values that are actually continuing down to negative infinity as we approach this um, vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1.